El Monte is a leading supplier of conflict-free tungsten with its flagship Sangdong mine in South Korea and existing production in Portugal. An aspect of the company that may not be as well recognized as its tungsten production is its potential for molybdenum. And the company has just announced that its large-scale drilling program has begun at the Sangdong molybdenum project very close to its tungsten project. So we've got CEO Lewis Black here joining us, and I'm Martin Gagel with Market Radius Research. Please remember this is neither recommendation nor investment advice. We're here to learn about the company. Lewis, welcome back. And I guess we're going to be learning about molybdenum today. Uh, oh, good, good morning, Martin. And yes, I, I'm going to try and share my pearls of wisdom on Molly as, as quickly and succinct as possible. All right. So you just announced a, uh, a large scale, uh, I believe, 11,000 meter uh, ish drill program for the, the Molly project. Uh, give us a just for those of us who don't know anything about it, just a quick, broad overview. Where is it and uh, what, what work's been done so far on it? And what do you what are the next steps? Well, well, firstly, I mean, I want to point out that this is not a, a classic drill program for exploration. This is actually to start confirming the mine plan, because as we had said earlier this year, as soon as, as, as the tungsten asset is about to open, we would then pivot straight into developing the Molly mine, which sits a mere 300 feet from our existing underground infrastructure, but it's totally separate from the tungsten. So we have sort of two mines, uh, both are fully permitted. There's no permits further, further required, which of course is worth an arm and a leg in a democracy. Um, and this is the, the, the sort of initial steps to start making the, the plan. Why we're developing it is, is two very good reasons. One, Korea is a, a vast consumer of molly. The world's second largest uh, molly oxide smelter sits in country with Sayar Steel. And on top of that, from an operations point of view, well, it's cheap to get in there when it's only 300 feet from our existing underground infrastructure. We can actually co-share a lot of the, the, the infrastructure underground to bring it to surface, which saves you a bundle of money. And, and so that's very important. So it's cost effective, it's high grade, it's a vast resource, very comparable to, to our tungsten asset. And we have a very uh, vibrant, market domestically so it is a separate deposit or uh has mineralization it's distinct it's not while you're digging for the uh one that you're getting the other one you're no no you're totally separate okay they, they, it, it's a bizarre quirk of a polymetallic mine where yeah. you're actually going to have very distinct zones that are totally isolated well 300 feet yeah. Um, but I mean, we have a small amount of molybdenum found in our tungsten side in, in mm -hmm. one of the ore bodies, one of the three ore bodies. But on the molybdenum side, we find no tungsten. We find a little bit of gold, but but I mean, nothing of any any great notes. Um, but it's it's essentially totally separate. It'll have a separate portals, separate plants. And in fact, the way we'll do it is that you wouldn't even know it exists if you were standing at the tungsten plant because the molly plant will be on the other side of the hill. So it, it, from from only from the surf, from, from the air would you be able to see that these things have a relation a relationship, but on the ground you'd never know. So how much when it does presumably get into production does it share a lot of resources? I guess general overhead and general infrastructure. Uh, maybe share some trucks, but uh, is there a lot of synergies between the two? Well, I mean, obviously, you you save on on the the the, the more mundane stuff like administration. Uh, because you're all running it out the same office. Uh, in terms of sharing infrastructure, it's really the only part is one part of one of the access ramps where the as you're standing on the tungsten mine, the tungsten will go to the right and the molly will go to the left. And that's it. Right. And and so apart from that, but but you've got to understand the cost of actually having that infrastructure, you know, to replicate that is very expensive because yes. you're you're at depth. But because it already exists. It's it it and also it means we can de-risk it. I mean, obviously, this is my money. Remember, it's not I'm not just a public company. I put a lot of my own money into this. We can de-risk it because we have much greater visibility and access than you would normally have of a virgin deposit where you'd have to go from surface. We can actually analyze this and have analyzed it from underground. 
All right. And the like the um tungsten mine is an old mine that you've reopened and and you've re expanded call it. The molybdenum that is fresh. That has not been mined before. No, no, it's it's completely fresh. I mean, it was in fact the previous when the government and Korea Tungsten were running the tungsten mine back in the day, they actually discovered this molly and drilled it out. So we were again beneficiaries of the fabulous work that Korea Tungsten had done. And of course, molybdenum was always considered to be the poor relation to tungsten. You know, if you couldn't afford tungsten, you took molly, even yeah. though molybdenum has a third of the wear properties of tungsten. But the world has significantly changed and molybdenum is now used in a lot of specialty steel, which is used for heat resistance in rockets and missiles and, and such. So it has connections in the similar type of profile of the markets that we operate in. They behave in similar ways. They're extracted in similar ways. And in terms of pricing, they're much now more aligned than they were, say, 20, 30 years ago when this mine was last open. All right. So let's talk through the steps now. You started your drill program. Uh, what do you hope to find from this and what would the, the steps following this be? Well, the, the, we're not expecting to find anything, uh, you know, a, a, anything that we don't already know. This is actually to be able to plan our production. How do we go in there? What stages do we mine? You know, which galleries do we open first? Where's the access ramp going to go? You know, this is the initial stages of actually opening a mine. We have a deposit. We, we are familiar. We know where the reserves are. Yes, we can close the mesh and we can, you know, with this drilling program, we'll be able to, to convert some of the, the inferred into measured and indicated. So we can actually assign a value to this on our books. But ultimately, the aim of this program is to look at how we can efficiently mine it and, and what steps we're going to take now to open this up. All right. And can you give us a quick review on what the resource estimate is currently on uh, the molybdenum? Well, we have we have published a joke on this and, and it is historical data. A lot of this drilling that we're doing will be confirmation data. But I take comfort that the same companies that the companies that drilled the molybdenum also drilled the tungsten. And when we did confirmation on the tungsten, we found it to be very reliable, the historical data. So we do not expect it to be any different this time around. So I think I'd, I'd like to refer people to the joke because of all kinds of rules about me publicly stating, uh, let the qualified person do the talking on, on that. All right. Will you be doing uh, like an NI43101 Canadian standards resource estimate or yes. will you be doing it's already... a fresh um, jork uh, on this when uh, you get the confirmation drilling in that? Absolutely. Once this drilling campaign is, is finished, we have to actually update our 43101 and our jork. Uh, so that we can actually assign book value to, to it. So yes, they, they will be. It will be updated, and the whole program is being managed and supervised by our QP. So right from the get go, you know, he's involved in in the whole you know review process. All right. So it is. It, this is uh, early de or development or stage uh, project. When would you? Can you give us some major milestones you would expect to hit with, let's say, in twenty? 26 and 27 uh, of what the next milestones for the the molly project would be over the coming years i think in 2026 we would expect to complete the uh, funding package uh, because we're going to be doing it locally and we would start uh, work on the plant toward the end of 2026 the good news is there's nothing that we we're doing with the molybdenum that we haven't just done with the tungsten so like anything, if you do it, you know, repeatedly, you get better at it. So we would imagine that the journey to build the molly plant will be somewhat smoother than the tungsten. Remember, we're not in a mining jurisdiction. We're building on the side of a mountain. We've learned a great deal about operations in Korea. So uh, let's see. Let me put together the, the funding package during next year and let me start actually the construction or at least the, the civil works during the end of next year. All right. So could this be something that would, what, maybe come into production and in not, I doubt 2027, but maybe 2028 or? I would say that because of our approach, I would like to think by the end of 2027, we'd start seeing the first material coming out. Oh, okay. This is not, we don't have a huge number of, of contaminants in terms of, and contaminants aren't bad things. They're just things you don't want in the concentrate when you ship it. You know, like, uh, I don't know, you know, for instance, in the tungsten, we have gold, bismuth and silver as byproducts. We want them out before we ship it. The molly is much cleaner. 
in that regard. So it means our processing is, I wouldn't say simpler, but more predictable. And that, of course, expedites, you know, time, which is important. Do you have a sense of how much process, like what steps of the processing phase will you be doing on or near site before you ship it off to the, the big Mali refinery that you're saying is in uh, South Korea? Uh, we'll, we'll be concentrating it up to around about a sort of 50, 55 percent grade concentrate. So that seems to be sufficient for the molyoxide smelter. And, and of course, when you have a local, a local customer, uh, life does get rather simpler than, than having not to deal with shipping. When, yeah. when you can pick up the phone and say, come and get it. It's, um, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to domestically supply people. I think is the best way to put it. In Europe, we have the benefit of no borders. So customers that we have from Portugal, they send a truck to come pick it up. It's it, it just it's one less aggravation in your life, which is which is when you're in the mining business, it's good to try and reduce that. And how far away is the the smelter from you guys by road or by uh, it, by the bird flies? Oh well, you, you, by road. I mean, it depends. If you drive, if you drive like a, 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 you know, as the Koreans do, which is very conservatively, it's around about two hours and fifty minutes. If you drive like a Portuguese, which is a reckless abandonment of of life and safety, it's around two hours and fifteen minutes. All right. Anything else of note that we should be aware of of uh, the Mali side of things before we uh, maybe discuss some other uh, get some other updates? No, no. I mean, I, I, I think that. Um, Look, it's it's another big scale project. Uh, it would be nice for me to have had a you know maybe a week's rest, but there's there's no rest for the wicked. We have to get cracking. We have a, an enormous opportunity with this window that is open regarding strategic metals. We are a fully permitted mine in a democracy, which is a rarity in itself. And so we have to, as as they would say here in New York, when it's sunny, you make hay. And and so therefore we're going to power straight through into this next one. Excellent. All right. On the tungsten side of business, is there any quick updates you want to provide? Uh, let people know how things are, are progressing. Well, well, I, I'll steer them towards a, a, an article that came out in the Korea Times yesterday. Uh, we had a, we allowed a journalist to to come onto site. Uh, we have to be, you know, a lot of our equipment is proprietary, so you know, and there's there's lots of people uh, watching and looking. Would love to know some of our secret source processes, and until they're fully covered uh we we did actually you know restrict what the, the the journalist could take pictures of but he came and saw for himself we have uh hatch the independent engineer arriving first week of november for mechanical completion sign off um you know we're building the largest tungsten project in terms of plant size and underground size since 1971 in the west which is when they built middlesil in austria this is no small undertaking. It's completely encased. It's completely undercover. It's built on the side of a mountain. It's highly automated. It is at the cutting edge of what is, is technically uh, you know, available within Tungsten. We've developed a lot of the technologies and innovations ourselves. Um, we've, you know, again, the pilot plants now uh, are now running seven days a week, 24 hours a day, three shifts. We're using ore that we, the mine is finished on the ground, ore that bringing surface, we're pumping right through the pilot plant, keep checking, testing, checking, testing, you know, stress testing, everything now. It's now we're in the, the point of uh, high, high drama. This is it. This is the, the moment, you know, this isn't kicking the tires. This is, is putting, like they do with new cars, you're running it at maximum revs to see if anything's gonna drop off. Let's see, we're, we're, we're close, but I don't wanna jinx it. But, uh, you know, we've had a, a couple of, of small things like software issues that had to be fixed by Siemens. This is why we do this slow and gradual inching test of every sector. And that's why we're now really stressing the pilot plants. Let's see what happens. If we make a mistake in the feedstock, what happens? What reagent? Everything is now being, every tire is being kicked. So the journalists came on. Uh, we have more coming. Uh, we're under a lot of pressure domestically to open the site to the public because it's a very exciting moment for, to see this Korea tungsten come back since it closed in 93, you know, just historically because of its importance in the country. A lot of politicians being on site, all taking credit for the work, of course. Um, and, and so I think this is, this is going to be a very 
dramatic and exciting run up to Christmas. All right. Well, I guess we'll we'll leave it at that, Lewis. Uh, thanks for the update. Uh, congrats on uh, all the progress you guys are making there. Have a great day, and talk to you again soon. Thank you very much, Martin, for having me.